Okay, we're here today on this episode of The Real Weather Watch with Art Douglas. Art, who are you with? Jason, I'm with Creighton University, which is in Omaha, Nebraska, but fortunately I'm a professor emeritus now, so I just primarily do consulting and, and live in Arizona. All right, so we're here at the ABIC conference in Red Deer. Um, the story of the weather in the West, what are we looking at as we head into spring? We've had a wonderful winter, as, as everyone here at the conference has been talking about. Not much snow, mild temperatures for most of the time. That's going to continue in February, but unfortunately as we go into the spring, things are going to turn around. This is partly due to a phenomenon we call the Pacific Decadal Oscillation and the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. The Atlantic is warm right now, the West Coast is cold, and that always tends to favor cold springs. So as we go into the spring, March, April, May, looks like we're going to have temperatures running about 2 centigrade below normal from the Alberta region eastward to about Saskatchewan. As we get over into eastern portions of Manitoba, maybe not quite as cold, 1 degree below normal, but that 1 degree below normal going all the way over into Ontario. So what are we going to look at as far as precipitation? It's been, it's been dry here. One thing that's, that happened this past fall is we'd had a lot of warm water develop last summer and it was starting to move towards the west coast and it created a lot of storminess in October and November. Those storms cooled off the Pacific Ocean off British Columbia. With a much colder ocean we have less moisture coming into the continent. The storm track tends to be weaker than normal. It's also diverging. Part of it's going south, part of it's going north. and that dry pattern is actually going to continue as we go into the spring in which most of the storms are going to start dropping out of the northwest coming out of Alaska down into the uh, prairie provinces. That's not a good track for moisture. Also that northwest track kind of keeps the Gulf of Mexico moisture from coming northward and consequently then you have relatively dry conditions at least in the center part of Canada. So when we talk about weather patterns um, we usually look long term um, what kind of a cycle are we in right now? As I mentioned before, we're in the cycle of a very cold uh, eastern Pacific, west coast of the North America, warm Atlantic. This is a pattern that changed over in the Atlantic in 1994-95, changed over in the Pacific 97-98. Unfortunately, they last about 20 years to 25 years in those cycles. So we're not going to have much relief uh, in terms of the weather patterns across North America for about another 10 to 15 years. And you know the, the area that I would be more concerned about is the southwestern United States, going from California, Texas region, in which droughts are going to be more prevalent. On the other hand, in the Pacific Northwest, southwest Canada, this actually tends to be a wetter period for this region of the country. Colder winters, didn't have one this year, Wetter winters didn't have one this year, but that's because we're actually headed towards an El Nino right now. And it looks like world weather patterns are really picking up more on the El Nino. Uh, at least that's what's been occurring the last couple of months. So could we be looking ahead to maybe a little bit of precipitation going this spring? You know, what the problem is, uh, with the cold water along the coast, we can't warm that up until we get towards the, the uh, summertime, so the likelihood of being able to extract much moisture out of this air mass coming from the Pacific is, is not very, you know, not very likely. Uh, the other problem though is if we're going into an El Nino situation and it's likely to peak then come fall and early winter next year, the dryness that we see now actually will get worse as we go into the fall and early winter of 2012-2013. Uh, so not a real good story for farmers and ranchers, especially in that uh, Texas Texas area? No, actually that the dryness that I was referring to is here in Canada, um, southwestern portions of Canada. should have said southwest Canada, not southwestern U.S. Uh, El Ninos in the fall tend to create very wet conditions in the southern plains uh, down there in Texas where they've had this drought as well as our winter wheat country. On the other hand, these El Ninos tend to create very dry falls, winters, and early springs up here in Canada. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Art. Thank you very much, Jason.